So I want to take you on a little bit of my journey because it was, it's been a journey and a struggle, not easy. But I was in my training and I was in the emergency room and a woman who's 53 wheeled into the emergency room and she had stomach pain, she was sweating, she was nauseous and vomiting. And I was in my training with the doctors that I so revered and trusted and they put her in the corner with the diagnosis of gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis is inflammation in the stomach. You give a little bit of Zantac and send the person home. And what happened was she proceeded to have a heart attack in front of the doctors I trusted, in front of the people who were there to save lives, and they watched her as she almost died. It was this aha moment. We talk about Oprah, that aha moment. I promise you, everything slowed down. Everything got silent, and I looked around like, did anyone else notice what just happened? And nobody was paying attention. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's it. I'm going into a field of women and heart disease, and, and I'm going to not call it women and heart disease because it's not about disease, it's about health. And I want women to learn how to get their own health because this is absolutely unacceptable. And guess what? I was told there was no such thing as women in heart disease, so you can't go into this field. Oh, wow. Wow, wow. So I thought, well, I don't want to I don't want to deal with disease anyway. I want to deal with prevention. So I want to do a preventive cardiology fellowship focused on women, right? Make sense? Yes. Guess what? There was no preventive cardiology fellowship. And I just happened to be luck, which I don't believe in at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure neither, and no one in this room right. believes in luck. And I can't always say that in every room. But as we know, everything happens for a reason, the way it's supposed to. And it just turned out that my training was in the same location where Dean Ornish established his East Coast site. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. For diet and exercise, group support, and stress management with yoga. So I did what every normal person does. I stalked the chief of cardiology. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't give me an appointment because I was just a resident, and he was very busy. And what did I want from him? So I followed him around the hospital, so much so that I accidentally followed him into the men's room. <laughs> and he said, how can I help you? I said, please give me five minutes. Women are dying of heart disease. We need prevention. We have to figure this out. And I think I was so annoying that he actually <coughs> developed a preventive cardiology fellowship for me that was CGME approved nationally. Wow. Yes. I thought at that time that I was never going to be that tired again. <laughs> I was not aware it was just the beginning. <laughs> During that year, what I learned was there was nothing more powerful than circles. There was nothing more powerful than a room of women because I'm going to tell you something. All of us may look around and think we are very different, and there's more about us that is similar than our differences. As women, the commonality of us, there is nothing, nothing like it. And when you sit in a room of women and you communicate, there is power there. And what's happening in the world now, and I promise you, as we disintegrate, we are going to thrive because women, the power of women does not let the world fall apart. I know that. You know that. And instinctively, we all know that. <coughs> I completely don't went off script. Anyway. <laughs> what I also learned about women at that time was that we live from our hearts. We feel everything in our hearts. <coughs> So when women get palpitations or chest pain or shortness of breath, it's just about their lives. Their hearts are the metronomes mm. of how they live. 
So is it about heart disease, or is it about how our lives manifest in our hearts? <sighs> Say that to a bunch of MD men. Yeah, you should see their reaction. <laughs> they don't get it. And so more women were dying of heart disease than men. In fact, more women die of heart disease than all cancers combined. Wow. Yes. One in three will die of heart disease, one in 33 of breast cancer. And all, all of us believe that breast cancer is our greatest health threat. And I'm going to tell you that I believe if we don't look at women a little differently and understand that depression, anxiety, hostility, social isolation, this insane juggling act of families and our lives, and more than anything, our constant caregiving and not getting back. We can all caregive, we just need to get back. If we figure this out, if we acknowledge and look at these things critically, then we'll actually treat women a little differently and understand that heart disease is about heart sickness just as much as it is about high blood pressure and high cholesterol and diabetes, and smoking, and sedentary lifestyle, and all these other things, including family history. When I talk about family history, 80% of the time, by the way, heart disease is preventable. Are we a product so much of our families that we get heart disease? Absolutely not. We all have our own drive, our own force, our own way of living, our own choices. And we get to make those choices every day to decide how we're going to live our lives and how much we can take care of our hearts. The only tools we have to express our hearts are our words. And there is nothing more challenging than words. Words are nuanced, they're complicated. What one person says, another person hears in a very different way. So how you choose to speak is the most important way to communicate how you feel in your heart. And from what I see today through these circles, this art of communication is something that a circle fosters. That when women come together, we learn how to speak in a different way that we all understand what our words mean. And then the second part is we need to learn to listen. Because words don't always mean what they say. Sometimes words mean something else. So as you're communicating, speak your words. And as you're sitting there, listen. Listen deeply. If we all understand what, what we need from each other and how we live from our hearts is not just how we live our days, but it's how we receive those days as well. Our voices represent how we feel, but how we feel, that's in our hearts, and our hearts can only speak through our, our words. One of the most compelling pieces of data that came out are the, is the data about optimism. And when we look at what, what's going on every day, it's very hard to wake up and look at the news and be optimistic. But we need to have a little bit of hope and a little bit of understanding that it matters how we think, that it collectively, energetically matters how we get up in the, in the day. There was a study that showed if you look at the day, half glass, glass half empty versus half full, outcomes are worse. But with people who are optimistic, there is actually an increase in longevity, vitality, and in health. So by simply waking up in the morning and making the choice to have hope, you are actually changing the outcome of your health. Our power, we use that word power. It's in self-acceptance. It's in self-love. It's in forgiveness. But most critically, it's an understanding the power of what love gives us. The heart equals love. If we understand that self-love, love for others, and love for actually 
taking care of ourselves, paying attention to what we eat, is not about a diet. It's not about food. It's about nourishing who we are, our souls, to thrive. When we talk about exercise, I think of exercise as being connected to our physical beings. How else do we do that? But knowing our body in space, standing, how powerful is that? We get grounded, we get connected to who we are. So exercise isn't a, an annoying thing, it's a gift to be able to move your body. And what does that do? It decreases blood pressure, it dilates the arteries, and guess what? It prevents heart disease, or does it promote heart health? from a very, very different perspective. When we look at depression and we look at anxiety, it's a manifestation of us not living from our hearts. So what do we do? We sit, we meditate. And do you believe that meditation decreases the risk of heart disease between 30 and 60 <coughs> percent? That's more than any pill, that's more than aspirin. So when we think about heart disease, let's turn it around and think about heart health and let's think about how we truly live from our hearts. Our power is in love and it's in self-love. And lastly, every single day, if every single one of you can wake up with a purpose, with passion and a purpose, this is about longevity, this is about vitality. And there's no study more interesting to me than the fact that people live longer when they wake up every day with a reason for being. And every single one of us are on this planet for a reason. Find out what that is, and I promise you, you will live a life of heart health, of heart wellness, and with all the love that you need. Thank you. Oh.